Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on a little bit of a panic. Uh, we're doing Path to Glory campaign, and I got the new Cities of Sigmar book, and I was really excited because I actually get to have like some real work with my uh, old Empire guys. Uh, you can see this is very clearly my unfinished steam tank, um, so that's in the work. So obviously, I need a base, and I need to touch up a bunch of stuff, and you can see there's some pretty rough outlines and all that. Um, but it's the old Mela guy, too. This thing weighs about... Uh, Anyways, I swear it's about four pounds of metal. It's just absolutely massive and uh, looking forward to getting it out there. Uh, again, the older sculpting, I know it comes in plastic, but the thing's made out of iron for crying out loud. Um, but another thing that I'm going to be doing in kind of a true city's uh, spirit is I've got some of these uh, dwarfs left over from uh, the, uh, the Battle for Skull Pass set. And uh, I mean... <laughs> They're awesome. Um, you know, they're very static in some of their poses, but I mean, <laughs> they're pretty awesome. And I got a couple of these guys kind of kicking around. Managed to rummage together 10 of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do just a really quick kind of panicky paint uh, of these guys. Um, I've already taken them. They came with the uh, square bases. So I pulled them out. Uh, luckily, they weren't glued in. Um, cut off the little tabs at the bottom. And now uh, the plan is to paint these guys um, and get, uh, you know, like a very quick kind of paint job out of this. So um, maybe we can apply this to regular dwarfs. But I figured, uh, uh, you know, I thought it would just be a lot of fun to kind of put these guys together. And I might as well film it and, film it and take you guys along uh, for the journey. So uh, I'll get them glued to the base here. I'll get the bases all done. And then I'll run off and get them primed. And uh, yeah, I need to get these done in a hurry. Okay, so we can see in the background here, I've got uh, the dwarfs all... Uh, done up in Corax white. Obviously, it uh, ties together even if you've got the kind of resin bases not too happy. But I thought I'd bring basically the only progress I've ever made on my Empire army. Uh, I thought I'd bring these guys to light. Uh, I like the colors. Um, I choose the... Um, the, the, the red and the yellow and the blue is kind of a complementary color. I chose it because I really like the high visibility. There's not a lot of yellow um, just in general on tabletops and it really contrasts out against the greens and the browns that you usually see uh, on, on, the, on, on kind of the surfaces you're playing on. So I've got the steam tank here which is the original one. It weighs a ton and I've got a spearman uh, there's an old six head spearman here as well. And, you, know, you kind of tend to collect these older models. But I just want to give you an idea of the paint scheme that I'm essentially going for. You can see here we got lots of the steel colored, uh, kind of the um, lead belcher. We've got a lot of the kind of the brighter golds. And then we've got the red and the yellow and the, the blue highlights and all of that. So, um, getting that out of the way. In order to kind of combine these together for the individual cities of Sigmar, as I kind of get in here, uh, one of the things that I really want to do is uh, just kind of continue along with that theme. So uh, I'm going to be working in here and going after the metallics uh, quite a bit. Uh, on the shield, I think I'll pick a, a red. I really like the look of the red, even though we'll have some kind of red beards. Uh, we'll be mixing up the colors of the beards. And then I'm also going to do, you know, kind of all the runic stuff in a bright gold with that kind of uh, bright metallic -y sheen to go with it as well. So, uh, let's dive in. Uh, I'm going to start off originally here with uh, the Retributor armor. Now, I'm going to go after all of that highly decorative uh, metallic -y bits. And I'm going to do those with the Retributor armor first, or the golds first. So, the reason that I'm going to do that is because it's a lot easier to kind of do the details first and then come back later and just kind of touch them up uh, by applying the larger kind of colors after and we'll see that in a sec. Uh, so, now I'm going to use these guys pretty much as iron breakers or long beards or whatever I can um, because, you know, they're... Uh, dwarf warriors from fifth ed here uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to work my way around uh, all the trim that's on here now again i really want to pull off that kind of metallic -y look um, because i want them to if i had to have them as like the super armored iron breakers it would kind of make sense and being dwarfs they'd be super uh super duper uh kind of armored up with the glitziest kind of blingiest stuff all right, so continuing to work my way down, uh, I'm going to do this all over the armor. So it's going to look like this golden, it'll either be golden kind of cloth holding it together, but you can see the rivets and all that. So I want it to be these gold 
uh, kind of gold bands everywhere. All right, so with the outside ring of that armor all done, I'm gonna have to come over with a second coat. Um, I'll also do the ornamentation on the axes themselves. And again, I'm gonna come back in and really clean this up uh, when we're done here. I'm just gonna get that coat on there. I don't wanna take forever with this thing. This little project here. It is an emergency after all. Now some of our friends here are gonna have a little bit of trim on that helmet. And some will be that kind of cross guard trim. Okay, which looks pretty bad when we just kind of belt it on there. Uh, but others also have a band uh, sitting right around uh, the top here. So make sure we get those bands there too. And of course some have bands uh, across the top of the helmet here. So we'll make sure we get all those little bits and pieces. We'll make sure we catch all those bits. Now with the shields, again, going to be much easier to come in uh, and, and paint around them. So we'll catch all the ornamentation, kind of that iconography on the shields here. And on our standard bearer here, uh, in addition to the uh, shield that we have here, uh, there's some iconography, which again, we'll kind of paint up and then paint around on the hammer at the top. Get those runes in there. Nice. And then we'll pick off all these little icons, these little medallions here. We'll get those in the gold as well. Now, finally, on the uh, gents playing the horn here, uh, I'm going to get all these cross bands. I want them done up in kind of a gold as well because we're going to do the steel on the inside for the horn. And that's that steel and gold looks great together. And it'll be consistent all the way through with the armor and all that. So uh, I'll finish off this, uh, the horn here. I'll finish off all those other details and I'll just kind of carry them all around and we'll come back and work on our other metallics. Okay, so we got the gold all finished up and you can see that it's pretty warm. Uh, it's a nice kind of warm color that uh, comes in in here. I'm gonna contrast that against uh, the lead belcher, so like a deep kind of silvery, uh, metallic -y color for our guys. Now, these are dwarven warriors, right? So, uh, though we are rushing through them, uh, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use them as long beards or if I'm going to use them as, um, as iron breakers. So what I'm going to do is, I know I've got some opportunity to introduce some color in here, but this kind of mailing on the back, I'm actually gonna go with a little bit more traditional and I'm going to uh, paint it in with lead belcher. And the way that we've done this, it's actually pretty easy to do uh, simply because we've already got the outline. So it's a lot easier to paint that inner area than the kind of outer, um, outer detail there. Now the next spots we're gonna paint with that detail is I'm going to do the ring around uh, the shield. And of course I'll do kind of the sides and the back of the shield as well. And you can see that we're still a little messy here, but again, we're gonna come and tidy this all up with our shield color as we kind of go along here. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to do anything uh, helmet-wise here that isn't covered by that kind of gold uh, trim. So we'll just do like a straight metal helmet for this guy here. Um, we've got another guy here. We've kind of done that little bit of a, a cross on the brow there. Uh, that's more of a full helmet. So we'll kind of do that full helmet like that. Make sure we leave lots of color on that gold. So this will kind of tidy up the helmet a little bit. Make it look a little more uh, serious here. Okay, um, and then other pieces uh, that we'll be taking a look at in here. Uh, if we've got something like Uh, the the musician here, if we've got his helmet, again, just going in, I don't know if you can see this, just going in and picking out stuff that's not that gold detail there. 
perfect. And there's only a few styles of helmets that came in that Battle for Skull Pass set, so uh, pretty good. Um, next up, we've got our standard bearer here, and um, he's got all his runes and all, runes and all that. Uh, I'm going to uh, go in and just do the uh, anvil around the top, so I can just tuck the paint into where that rune is. Just like that. And then edge around like this. And it looks like I've picked out the rune and painted it. But in reality, I've just kind of painted around it. So that's why we were so messy initially on all these. So you can see, it's a nice way to get that detail. Uh, and you don't really have to paint you know, a lot of stuff around it. You just kind of blob on the color initially and go from there. Uh, I've got chains in here around. So anything metallic now that's uh, kind of going around, I'll make sure I get that in that lead belcher there. Uh, in behind the shield, the post, all that. Uh, I'll do all that in the lead belcher. Now the last thing we're going to do with the silver is of course we're going to do all the weapons. And I'm just going to go around uh, where we did that gold there. Okay, around this little diamond at the back here. And on some of the axes, you're going to see we have this really cool detail back here where we've got oops, where we've got the the rune, which I can again paint around, uh, and then it extends out. So what I did is I painted it in the gold, and I'll just reach in between and tuck in that silver. And then I'll do it with these other lines here as well. And it looks like we you know very finely picked out those lines. Uh, but it's a much easier way to paint that kind of fine detail on these dwarfs. So, take your time, go around, uh, grab all the metallic-y kind of functional bits, um, get all your armor done, but I think it's going to have a nice, uh, this guy's kind of drying, I think it's going to have a nice look once we get the hair and the kind of the, the cloaks and everything and the skin color all in. So, uh, I'll continue along, make sure I fill all these in with the lead belcher, and we'll be right back to add some color. All right, so I've got the metallics all finished up and you can see that we are just eating through the real estate on the models here. Uh, they're painting up nice and quick, which is kind of exactly what I need. Um, what we're gonna work on now, before we get into the other colors, uh, we're gonna work on the flesh just because it's kind of deep inside the, the, the recesses there and the beards are gonna kind of come out uh, beyond that. And um, really liking, obviously, kind of the, the, the depth of color that you're getting already, like even right off with the, with the white primer. It's nice to be able to see what's going on, but that depth of color is going to be great. Uh, next up, we're going to use our Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're just going to go in, um, and because it's, you know, it's pretty deep uh, uh, three-dimensionally in there, uh, I'm just going to take my uh, Cadian Flesh Tone, and uh, I'm going to grab uh, my models here and... Uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of get in there um, and the wash will kind of help us out a little bit later But I just want to get that color applied uh, deep inside now. I've seen um, You know a bunch of these they've had uh, kind of their hands and basically sleeves rolled up But I'm going to use those curl overs like gloves uh, again just because of the whole iron breaker thing uh, I want to make sure that I can you know, I can pull them off as armored guys uh, if I need to. Now, uh, most everybody here is wearing um, cloth, which you can uh, kind of see here. But, um, so, the only persons or people that I'll do their hands will be first off the uh, standard bearer here. Okay. I'll make sure I get his uh, hands as well as his, you know, face in here and all that. And the other person who's going to need his hands is our musician here as well. Now, again, optional up to you. I would just, uh, I know we can just have all the hands showing, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, but again, I want to pull these guys off as potential iron breakers. Um, so I want them to be, you know, as armored up as possible. So I'll give them kind of hard, harder kind of leather gloves. Okay, so we've got the flesh tones in. Uh, again, uh, keeping most of these guys free for uh, gloved hands, which is pretty cool. Um, get on the topic of kind of model diversification. And I'm going to do that essentially through the beards because I think just a little bit of color, uh, dramatic shifts will be pretty good. Now, I've got three kind of colors of beards that I want to do. I've got kind of the ginger beards I want to do with the Troll Slayer Orange. 
uh, the blonder beards I want to do with Carrick Stone, and then I've got the other beards like the the deep browns. Um, I could do blacks, I guess, but I kind of want to keep the same tonal range because I'm going to recycle a lot of this for the gloves and the the leather pouches and boots and things like that. So uh, just keeping it simple in this case here, I like to alternate between three different kinds and. Um, so what I did is I took all my uh, duplicate models here and I've just kind of lined them all up so I know how to break them apart. So when I'm choosing, I'll choose uh, one of each. So you'll see that if I've got three different variations, uh, well obviously they'll get one of each, uh, each color of beard, which is great. Um, and then if I've got other variations in here as well, I've got these two gents back here, and then I've got um, these two here, the musician and the standard bearer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and effectively kind of break them up. Now, the one color that I'm not going to use for anything else essentially is going to be that ginger color of that troll slayer orange I'm just gonna use it for hair and beards um, so what I'll do is I'll start that one first because uh, the other ones will have you know we'll kind of carry those colors throughout the models and I'll kind of walk you guys through that as we go so for me um, easiest one to do here is I can pick the front two off of here and then I'll pick one of our uh, maybe our warriors here. Uh, something with a little bit of extra punch of color would be nice. So I think what I'll do is I'll take the, um, because I'm going to go with the uh, lighter um, color for his uh, horn there, I think what I'll do is I'll give him the ginger beard as well. So I'll separate those guys out first. And then I'll just uh, get their beards done with the uh, troll slayer orange. So really liking the way these guys are coming together i know i keep saying that but i mean it's just uh this is going so fast so i'll try and get my paint open here um this is going really quickly which is again what i need i need them kind of for uh for this weekend um and work's been a little busy and all that but i basically haven't invested a whole lot of time uh so far which is which is great so i'll go in here i'll make sure that i am careful of all that detail i'll get that nice brilliant stash in there Okay, uh, I'll carry that beard through here. And the ties, we're going to do like that leather color. So we won't worry about those, we'll just skip over the ties, obviously. And man, is it ever nice to have that big punch of color in here. And I think that's kind of, it's easy, very easy to kind of lose that, those punches and shots of color. But I love using these bright colors, just kind of mixed in, not too much. And of course, we're going to go with a red here because I want to match those other colors that I have. But um, no, I love that punch of color. And what's nice is at the back, you can see that we've got um, little shocks of color coming out the back here as well. So on this side of the shield, uh, you know, from this side, you can see that you get little shocks of color. You get it from the hair at the back. That just looks really cool. Okay, so I'll work my way around these three guys with the Troll Slayer Orange, and then we'll come back and we'll do the other colors, uh, the bases for the other colors, and we'll do the, uh, you know, little bits and bobs that we kind of go along using those same colors. Okay, so I've got the beards all uh, finished up on the uh, with the Troll Slayer Orange, and I love that big shock of color, uh, so much so that what I'm going to do is my next color for uh, beards is gonna be that kind of uh, dirty kind of blonde uh, color. And I'm also going to use it for a couple other elements like the horns and all of that. So I'll set these guys aside. I'll bring up my next batch of uh, four volunteers here uh, to get that kind of blonder uh, beard. And then in addition to what I'm doing with that, I'm going to go in and get uh, the horns and of course the long horn for the instrument over here as well. So I'll just uh, work my way through these guys and um, I'll use Carrick Stone for that. I'm gonna come in and do like a, uh, a highlight of Screaming Skull after this is all kind of said and done. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just start on maybe our musician, or our uh, standard bearer here. And again, same thing, just gonna go through, uh, pick out all of the beard. You know, make sure your paint's thin, but not too thin. You know, just a, you know, tap it to the surface of your water there and then uh, you know, spread it out on a palette or something beside you. And it allows you to have just that right amount of consistency to go in and do this. So these beards ultimately will be uh, a little bit lighter than the rest of the model because we're going, uh, you know, with high, kind of high visibility colors with the red's going to be fairly bright in the end. 
and um, so though this is going to be kind of nice to have this you know this balance kind of halfway through um, and make sure you don't forget all those little uh, bits that kind of sneak out to the side here um, there's sneaky opportunities for color and of course we don't want to miss them and just paint them silver or something like that as I'm working through um, I also want to catch all the bone kind of elements that are in here like the the horns uh, that are on all of the helmets uh, there's some guys with some longer horns and there's some guys with uh, these little stubby horns here we can use uh, the Carrick stone on that as well just to make sure that we get kind of that foundation for that brighter bone color we're going to be putting on there okay and another thing that I want to make sure I grab and get the uh, that bone color kind of down or starting it off anyways is going to be the horn that's here so uh, we did the outside of the horn or the you know kind of the the bracings of the horn and the decorative elements in the gold I'm just going to go in here and I'll put a base in of Carrick stone uh, just for those other pieces that aren't included in the bands of that horn and the end result for our musician is going to be a nice uh, kind of balance of colors we've got the bright of the beard we'll have the brightness of the red for the cloth and all that and uh, it'll also contrast those dark metallics uh, as we go okay so they're coming together now we got all the blonder kind of beards in we got the bones uh, the foundation we can use it as the foundation for bones stuff as well and now we're going to do the darker beards and all the leathery stuff with uh, dryad bark now there's only gonna be one thing that's gonna be a little bit different about this but let's start with uh, the beards let's do the beards first so I've got some uh, dryad bark here and um, I'm just gonna go in obviously uh, we'll do the beards as we've been going kind of all along it'll give us a little bit of a dark contrast in the mix for these guys which I think will be pretty cool all right so we'll do the the gloves as a leathery bit here it's pretty watered down this one we'll also do any of the leathery products like the pouches here And we'll reach in there and we'll get the shoes, the boots here. Now, one of the other things I want to get as well is any of the wraps that are going around uh, the beards. I'm going to do in the dryad bark. I just want it a little bit darker, like a darker kind of uh, darker kind of leather. Okay, so of course, obviously, we'll wash this and we'll highlight it, and that'll be fine. Um, but some of the wraps are going to be on. Do, 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 do. So this guy here. Uh, we're going to be giving him a dark beard okay dark beard and hair but uh, his wrap I'll actually leave and I'll do it in the Steel Legion drab so that way I get a little bit of contrast and it's not just one big blanket brown going on there so uh, any of the wraps that are in kind of the lighter beard colors and the beards uh, I'll do in the dryad bark but if you you don't want to do like a double dryad bark there, so I'll actually use a lighter color just for that one, just for that one beard wrap. All right, so I've got all the leather uh, bits done and the dark beards and hair done. I've got the gloves uh, done on the models that don't have their hands exposed, and just kind of worked my way through. And you can see it's really adding lots of depth, which is which is great. Uh, next up, we're going to use uh, Steel Legion drab as promised, um, just for that one little bit of a beard tie um, where I don't want that double uh, that double dryad bark. Uh, kind of dark brown uh, and that's just a super simple super clean and easy one uh, if we've got any other kind of dark colors overlapping we may want to do this as well as an option uh, but I just wanted to do it just as a little bit of a different thing and then of course there's a little bit back here as well we'll do Okay, so with all the primary colors down, I'm finally going to get to the main kind of color of the army. I'm going to do the sleeves of their uh, of their tops there. I'll do the sleeves, and then I'll do the shields as well. Now, I'm going with red because that's the color that kind of suits my army. But again, you could start with, you know, getting these guys up to this point. And if you batch painted a thousand of them, now you could bring in different colors of, you know, for squads or houses or, or what have you. So... Um, super simple. I'm going to grab uh, two parts of these guys and I'm going to start with uh, getting them all uh, kind of colored up red. Uh, now probably the easiest to show would be on the um, the banner carrier here. Uh, some of them are going to be really easy to kind of put together in terms of the red. Uh, you're just going to go in and tuck 
uh, red color into the background of those shields. Now if you go over for whatever reason you can always top it up. Now again we painted that detail early on so all I need to do now is just push paint into the edges and it's going to be a lot easier than just trying to get that very uh, fine line on top of that ornamentation, that decoration there. You can see even with these little tiny details you just tuck paint on either side just like this and it works super well. I don't have to try and paint that tiny, tiny little line there. And immediately it starts bringing color to the, uh, the squad. You can see that again. We'll just go in here and we'll paint the sleeves in the red. And you can see once we get that red in there, it really starts unifying that squad together. That little regiment there. But... Uh, the army is going to look consistent all the way through. Very cool, nice and bright and distinct. All right, so I worked my way around getting the shields and the sleeves of their shirts all kind of done up. And we'll see where that takes us. Okay, so uh, I went through, did a bit of a dummy check. I made sure that we uh, didn't miss any spots uh, kind of throughout as we went along. And um, finished up the bases because I like to wash the bases at the same time. And, uh, and here we are. Uh, now, obviously we're going to be going and applying a whole bunch of other colors. So if you see a couple spots like this one here where you missed, uh, we can do that after the wash, right? We can just touch things up constantly as we iterate through the, the models uh, doing a different step. I tend to kind of touch things up all the time. All right, so uh, next step is to kind of add some, pers you know, some, um, some kind of depth to these colors in here. So I'm going to use this homemade wash that I've got. Um, I use it for pretty much everything. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, you do 25% Agrax Earthshade, 25% Nuln Oil, and then 50% uh, Floor Wax, which is just kind of everyday regular floor wax and it works out really really well and you'll see um, the moment I start applying it you'll see that it immediately goes into all the nooks and crannies the depths and really kind of brings out that highlight now um, my wash brush is just about toast it's just about time for a new one here um, but uh, you can put as much as you want of this stuff on uh, just make sure it doesn't um, you know kind of pool up anywhere in these little nooks and crannies you can always go back in so I'll uh, dump a bunch of this on uh, I'll give it about 45 minutes to dry and uh, you know it's really gonna bring out those details it's gonna deepen that gold it's going to uh, kinda you know deepen out that chain mail as well and just add loads of depth to the model itself all right, so I'll get this all uh, washed up and then um, we'll be back in about uh, 45 minutes or so. All right, so now that these guys are all washed up, you can really see that it's really punched up the detail and these guys are almost uh, table ready as it is. I mean, I'm sure we could toss them on the table and be uh, quite pleased and get away with it. So uh, awesome, really happy with the way they've turned out. Again, the speed painting approach here, it's only been a couple hours, so I'm actually pretty stoked with where we're, we're at. Um, all right, so what I would like to do now is maybe, um, we're gonna pick up the beards. Uh, now the beards look really good, uh, just with that thin kind of wash around. I mean, that floor wax has done a really good job of just kind of getting the, the wash in there. So I might, um, I might highlight that a little bit uh, as, we, as we go along. So that'll be kind of a very light, uh, maybe dry brush that we'll work with. What I'd like to do now though, is just kind of pick out those reds um, to add a little bit more punch and color to these guys. Uh, I really like, again, that kind of high armor uh, kind of look, like the heavy armor kind of look with the chain mail and that kind of gold uh, metallic ribbing around the outside. And again, that looks, that looks pretty darn awesome. Um, but just to kind of get the base color down that I really want to get back up again is let's punch up that red. That's the color for the, the army. So I'm going to take my Mephiston red again. And let's grab a random dude here. Uh, I'm going to take up that Mephiston red uh, one more time here. And I'm just going to go in and essentially would be the major highlights. Now the shields, I mean, they're not really, you know, they're not really uh, a major highlight. You know, there's not a lot of uh, extra, you know, kind of low light that's in there. But what I'm going to do is just what would be just kind of away from all that shading. I'm just going to reach in a little bit and just kind of tidy up that red 
uh, that's around the outside just to bring that up a little bit and then we'll highlight that in a second so you can see how it just brings up that red just offers a little bit more consistency but we still keep the depth of that wash there which I think is really great uh, the next piece that I want to do of course is their uh, their shirts that we've done in red as well now with this one it's a little bit easier I can find out where all that shading is and I can just pick on those kind of higher high like those it's called an overbrush where we just go in and just kind of pick on the major highlights of what's going on with that red there now if you want to add just a little bit of extra punch um, while we're kind of going through this you can take wild rider red and I mean quite simply just go after just the the kind of extreme highlights or or, or what have you uh, what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of like you know uh, wild rider red make sure it's thoroughly kind of watered down don't put too much and just pick just out a little bit of the majors just kind of that top ring there or a little bit in here as well just add that extra little bit of punch just to bring up that red uh, just a little bit there uh, I can also go in and pick out all the extra highlights on things like the elbow you know these folds in here I can go in and touch those up a little bit uh, if I want any of the straight lines I can just just do a little bit of a line there all right go pick out these individual folds in the fabric and it's a fairly quick process and it gives you a nice bold red now if you do do what I did there kind of went a little hard I can always go back in with my brush and just reduce that back down again while it's wet all right, so I'll work my way around and I'll get the reds kind of up to where I want. Um, if you do too much over highlighting, you can always come back in with that Mephiston red and tidy things up a bit. So I'll carry the reds through and then I'll be right back. All right, so with those reds set in, we can really see that, you know, we're starting to add a lot of vibrance and color back to these guys. Uh, they look a little festive for me, but um, I'll do a squad of yellow if I need to and, and, and all that. So they'll mix right in with the other guys. Um, but the, the, the dwarfs themselves seem to have very much a, uh, you know, kind of a unified scheme whenever you see them together. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So it looks good. Um, next up, we're going to start addressing things like um, the uh, dark beards uh, and the gloves that are here, uh, the backpacks uh, on their little, sorry, little pouches on the back as well. Uh, we'll address those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, just like a small or medium dry brush here. I'm going to take some Steel Legion Drab and uh, I'm just going to do a very light dry brush over uh, those pieces. Now, um, it's kind of nice, like most of the stuff, if you look at the other colors, um, it's light enough that you can see that it actually, uh, that it actually looks you know, fairly decent on its own. You don't really need that dry brush. Um, but with these guys, uh, I'm going to uh, just kind of dress them up just a little bit. So what's nice about the beards is they've got this, um, they've got kind of a definite, uh, you know, a set of lines to them, a definite pattern to them, and it makes it really easy to uh, to dry brush them uh, and just go one way, which is great because they've got that very kind of stripy pattern to them. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just wherever I see uh, that dark brown, I'm just going to dry brush with a little bit of the Steel Legion Drab. And that dry brushing really goes to help out uh, what we're doing here in terms of executing this fairly quickly. The next thing we're going to do is take some Screaming Skull and we're going to go after those beards that were done up in uh, Carrick Stone. And again, we're just gonna provide a little bit of highlight to them. Uh, these could almost just be good on their own. Uh, but I'm going to give just a little bit of extra flair, and you can see I'm just going against the grain of those of those hairs on the beard there. And all it's doing is adding just a little bit of extra punch, a little bit of extra pop uh, to the colors that we have selected. Now you'll see that maybe you'll get some on the uh, on your reds or your other colors. That's fine. We'll do a tidy up uh, at the end of all of it. Um, but for the most part, I'm just going to go super light with the the dry brushing here. Now, while I'm trucking along here, since I've got the Screaming Skull out, uh, really the only other thing, uh, two things that we're going to do with the Screaming Skull are going to be uh, the horns. Now, the horns we've kind of uh, done up with our Carex Stone, uh, then we've washed it. And all I'm going to do for the horns is just pick away 
at the top bit there. So I'll pick the top, you know, kind of two thirds, and I'll just pick that out with the screaming skull. Just add a little bit of kind of punch to those horns, which is nice. Uh, you can see now once it dries, you get that nice kind of gradiated shade. Uh, that'll also go for the short horns here as well, which I'll just grab just the very ends of here. And then the last one I'm going to do is this horn. I wanted to do it in kind of a bone, uh, bone shape. Now, um, typically we kind of do deal from the tip of the horn back. Uh, but just because we're in a weird kind of highlight situation where I want the lighter color up top, I'm just going to do like a streaky kind of uh, coloring here from that top part. Just kind of blend that in just a little bit. Okay, I can go back in and, and kind of restreak, but I want a rougher texture there. And then I'll do the same with this here as well. And I'll do it at that end of each of these segments of the horn. Just like that. Now just to kind of continue the effect here, I'm just going to take some Carrick Stone, which is that initial color that we had, and I'm just going to blend it back up in that same streaky pattern so that it looks like they're blending into each other a little bit but I want it kind of rougher because those tusks are gonna have a very kind of rough uh, texture with them awesome now for the remaining uh, beards I'm going to use fire dragon bright and uh, again just the same kind of technique as before now this is a very bright one so I want to make sure I get most of it off my uh, brush here perfect um, what I'm going to do with this one here is the exact same thing uh, I'm just going to go against that grain, uh, just a very light dry brush, just to add just a little bit of extra pop on that hair and the beards. And you can see that really just brings out that extra little hit of color. All right, so with that dry brushing done, uh, I'm going to go in, I'm just going to touch up the faces just a little bit. Some of them are still a little dark from the wash. I just want a little bit of pop now. I'm not going to highlight with a larger, or sorry, with a, I'm not going to highlight with a brighter color. Uh, I don't want that uh, that large of a difference. I want them to have still a deeper uh, flesh tone. Uh, so I'm going to highlight with Cadian flesh tone again, which is basically just the base color that um, that I've used. And um, you got to be super careful with this one. Make sure you got loads of control and not a lot on your brush. Uh, but all I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to pick out the nose, just like that and then the cheeks. Okay, and that's it. Now, because I'm in a hurry, I'm not going to worry about the eyes, but I'll just do the nose and the cheeks. And if we've got uh, someone like our friend over here who's got his hands, uh, again, I'll do his nose and cheeks as well. But we'll just pick out those major highlights just to restore a little bit of color, uh, just kind of following these lines here. Maybe an overbrush across the top of the knuckles. Uh, just so that we recognize it as a flesh tone and we have that vibrance back so you can see here we're missing like a good chunk of color uh, from his face in here so i'll just go in and just touch that color up now as far as the metallics go i'm going to leave the silver i want it to look like it's iron forged and dark uh, but you can see that sometimes there's a few kind of oops that you've uh, gotten here so i'll just do a correction pass with lead belcher uh, if you wanted you could run lead belcher over the blades as well to give you an extra little bit of highlight. Uh, but I'm just going to go in and just touch up some of these oopses. Again, these guys are kind of uh, a panic mode uh, paint job. So what I'm going to do is just go back in, kind of cover that up just a little bit there, just to save a little bit of time. Uh, if you want to add a little bit of highlight back again, any of the high points there, you can just hit with the lead belcher. Uh, things like... If you want to go in here and touch this up, you can as well. Just around the shield, just to give that a little bit of brightness back, especially if you dry brushed a little bit aggressively there. See where it came pretty close? You can just go back in and touch that up a little bit, which is kind of nice. 
Uh, the chain mail, uh, I thought the wash did a pretty good job. If you don't have a lot on your brush, you can just streak it vertically like this as well to give a little bit of highlight from the top of the chain, uh, but I wouldn't really worry about it. And it's got a nice deep look with that lead belcher. So uh, I'll do a, a kind of a dummy pass around on these and then I'll highlight the gold. Now to highlight the gold, I'm going to use fulgurite copper. I know a lot of people will lean to like a storm host silver or they'll do like another light, light shade of gold or something like that. What I like about the fulgurite copper is it actually is, and you can literally see it when you look at the paint, but there's flecks of the gold and the silver in there at the same time. So you get to kind of two birds uh, with one stone uh, that highlight on the gold. And I'm just going to go over as an overbrush and just kind of just gently go over the highlights, um, just making sure I don't lose that depth that I got with that wash. And I'm just going to go in and make sure that that gold gets a little bit of a punch there. Uh, when it comes to the backs, again, just a little overbrush over top. Now these guys are my uh, quick and dirty version here, so I'm just going to do this. You could edge highlight it if you wanted to, but I'm just kind of in the middle if he's got like a span or something like that, just in the middle of the span, just to pick up the eye, uh, get a little bit of brightness on there, I'll do that. All right, so I'll go through and I'll overbrush all the gold and we'll come back and see how it looks. All right, so we've got them all finished up now and you can see how they turned out great. Um, this was supposed to be this super kind of easy, uh, you know, take some throwaway models here, which are the, uh, the dwarfs from the 5th edition starter box set, the Battle for Skull Pass. And I mean, there's tons of these guys kicking around. And I just wanted to have just something fun and simple to add to my Path to Glory campaigns. It was a dumb excuse to paint up some different models. <laughs> I love them. They turned out so well. Um, now, instead of me uh, doing my next project, which is my uh, Free People's Handgunners there, which you can see I've already got based up and kind of ready to go. Instead of me working on that, I'm going to be going into, I don't know, some uh, Iron Drake territory with, these, with the old Thunderer guys. And I mean, I tell you, they're... I, they're, they're so much fun to paint and they're fast and they're easy to paint uh, and they look great on the table too so no I'm uh, really looking forward to kind of finishing this up now it turned into this uh, quite the project anyway um, didn't spend much time only a couple hours on this which was great uh, and definitely I'll have them in time for my path to glory campaign so I am super stoked about getting these guys out there um, but that's it for this video guys uh, if you liked it obviously hit that like button uh, it pushes the video out there it pushes the channel out there you name it um, and if you want more videos like this of course of course hit that subscribe button and there's that little notification bell but they've added a few more options you can actually switch it to, so you get all of the content as opposed to what YouTube curates for you, which is great. So that's it for this one, guys. I am so stoked about these guys. And uh, yeah, I hope it was of value to you. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll catch you in the next video.